welcome back to the All Bike Update. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the 20-inch fat tire folding e-bike from Ecotrick. Before we dive deep down to the nuts and bolts of this bike, some of you are probably just here for an overview, so let's talk about some of those big specs. The 20 inch fat tire folder is priced at $1,300 USD. It is a class two e-bike capable of speeds up to 20 miles per hour. It has a 500 watt motor, a 48 volt battery, and can travel up to 35 miles per charge. The review unit that we got, it is this olive green color with a little bit of white, a little bit of black in there, sort of giving me those vintage US Army vibes. The bike does look a little bit smaller than it actually is so it is a fairly reasonable sized bike but the way that it is designed it just looks like it's one of those more smaller compact bikes that we've seen before so this bike isn't too fancy not a whole lot of bells and whistles on it but we're going to dive into some of those specs right now next let's talk about who this bike might be for with some of these measurements, we've got a 17 inch reach and a 25 inch standover height. So it's very approachable. There's a lot of people I think that could fit on this bike and ride it around. For me, at about that 510, 511 mark, I found that it was just not quite the right geometry for me to get a really good pedaling position and also be able to put my feet on the ground. But if you wanted to lower the seat down all the way, raise the handlebars up all the way and kind of have this chopper vibe to it and you just kind of wanted to use the throttle to get around, you could definitely do that. And I think that the bike would, you know, that would, that would work pretty well here. As I mentioned, it is a fairly long bike at 71 inches, which is a little bit deceiving because you look at it and you think it's kind of a small to medium sized bike and 71 inches is pretty big. We've seen some that are, you know, 74, 75, 76, some of those big bikes that look like big bikes. And so it's just a couple inches shorter than that. Yeah. Like I said, it's deceptively large. But the nice thing is we can fold it up. So those folded dimensions are 39 inches by 29 inches by 20 inches. So it folds up fairly decently. If you're at a spot where storage might be an issue, having that folding capability is super nice. Next, let's talk about the motor. So the motor we have here is a 500 watt rear hub motor. The motor we have here is an Ecotrick branded motor. I'm not sure who makes it for them. But with this being the third Ecotrick bike that we've tested in recent past, I haven't had any issues with any of the motors. They all seem to be functioning very well, at least compared with a lot of the bikes that I've tested in the past. I'm not sure how many Newton meters we get with this motor, but I was able to take it off on some trails. You'll see in some of those slow-mo shots, I'm kind of back here in the woods. There's some little bike trails back here with some actually pretty decent jumps and, you know, little ridges and stuff to fly down on. And it's all fairly flowy back here. There was a couple of instances where I hit these pretty steep inclines and I was able to get up them, which honestly surprised me. So I'm not exactly sure again, you know, what newton meters were getting, but it was actually pretty impressive when I was taking it on some of these, you know, little jumps and hills and, and whatnot back here in the woods. Next, let's talk about the battery. So the battery we have here is this 48 volt, 15 amp hour, 720 watt hour battery. Now, one of the things you'll notice right off the bat is it's pretty big and you can obviously, you know, you see it, it's part of the design of the bike. Now, one of my complaints with this battery here, and it's pretty much my only complaint because it is what it is. If I want to remove the battery or insert the battery, if I want to remove the battery, I found that I had to move the seat post up pretty much all the way, if not completely take it out in order to get this in here, you know, nice and easy. So not a huge deal, but it's just something to take into consideration. Like, Hey, if I want to take the battery out, I'll probably have to take this whole seat post out. The battery is lockable and removable. The only thing that is sort of unfortunate is if we want to use the bike and if we're buying it, let's, you know, we want to use the bike. You have to leave the keys in the battery in order to make it go, to give it the go-go juice. This is more of a personal preference thing. I prefer to have removable keys and these don't. So I would prefer it if I could remove it. Now it does take about six hours to get a full charge and you can get anywhere between 25 to 35 miles per charge. We do have this quick read out here on the top. So it's nice to be able to just, you know, turn the battery on and we can click this little button and it'll let us know, you know, roughly how much battery we have left in here. And the battery weighs 10.5 pounds and that's not, I don't think it's the heaviest battery that we have seen, but it's definitely pretty up there. You know, we've seen some batteries that are four or five, six pounds, something like that. And this one is, you know, sitting at that 10 and a half. Next, let's talk about the brakes. 
So we don't get any hydraulic disc brakes here. We've got these C-Star mechanical brake calipers down here and 160 millimeter discs. Now that's not really a huge deal to me on this bike because it is just a class two bike only going up to 20 miles per hour. And the terrain I feel like you'd be riding this on probably doesn't necessarily warrant having to have hydraulic disc brakes. At the price point of $1,300 though, it would be nice to see a couple little bells and whistles here and there. And I would probably look at and want hydraulic disc brakes to be one of those things that maybe can get upgraded in a future model. Next, let's talk about the gears. So the 20 inch fat tire folding bike is a seven speed bike. And those seven speeds are controlled by this Shimano SIS index thumb shifter up here on the right. Big fan of these thumb shifters. If you've seen any of my videos, you know I'm a big fan. They're easy, they're simple, they work. And that is connected back here to this Shimano Turney derailleur. When I was going through the gears on this bike, I didn't have any issues one through six. One through six were actually very smooth, buttery smooth almost. And then with six to seven, there was a little bit of a hard drop from six to seven. But honestly, I feel like that's something that could probably be worked out with a little bit of tinkering. Next, let's talk about the extras. So the two main extras you'll see right off the bat are these fenders we have here and the rear rack. So the fenders are this metallic construction. They're not the best fenders that we've seen. You know, I'm a big fan of those plastic fenders compared to these, you know, metallic rustable ones. But these ones, you know, they do the job. They actually fit in with the bike really well. Kind of a little bit shorter, a little bit fatter. Kind of gives us that small little tank vibe. When I, when I first put it together and actually... When I did the review, I thought that the spacing between those two fender attachment points, they didn't quite fit around the front fork as much as I wanted to at that attachment point. And then I realized that there was this little spacer in the box that I didn't use because I was like, I don't know where this goes. And so I think as I'm doing the audio part, I think I realized where that goes. So you do have to add that little spacer there and that's going to tighten that up. However, it would be nice if we didn't have to add, you know, just a little extra spacer just to make everything fit right. Not really a huge deal. Once you get it tightened down, it's, you know, you're not going to take it off for the most part. So not a huge deal. Just something I noticed when I was putting it together. And we've also got this rear rack. Now this rear rack, it's not the best rack. I mean, it came, it was straight, it was fairly simple to install. Uh, it wasn't one of those things where it didn't quite fit. That one fit really well. You know, all the screws went in as they were supposed to. And if you look at it, it looks like we've got these attachment points a little bit further down. So if we wanted to put on some bags, we do have some attachment options down there at the bottom, which is something we've seen on a, some of those, you know, smaller racks where they don't have any attachment points down below. So you kind of run out of options or you got to get creative. So it is nice that we have these attachment points down here um, with this rack. The bike also comes with this front light. Now the front light, it is fairly bright, you know, reasonably adjustable. The only thing is it's not integrated into the battery. So you will have to use batteries. I'm not hundred percent sure what batteries go in here. All I had to do is pull out the little tab and it worked for me, you know, installing it for the review. So I'm not sure what batteries or how long that's going to last. And then if you want to turn the light on, you've got to, you know, get off the bike or lean over and press the power button on top of the light here. The bike came with a rear reflector and it also came with a rear light that was integrated into this rear rack. Similar to the front light, it is also not integrated into the battery. So you've got to pop back here and turn it on from the back. So we also don't have any, you know, brake integration. So if we pull the brakes, it's not going to change the lights back here. So it's nice that we are provided these light options, you know, thinking about upgrades, it would be cool to get those integrated into the battery and then also integrated into the braking system. So if we're going to pull on the brakes, you know, it'll let people know that we're stopping. Next, let's talk about the essentials. The bike ships with everything you need to put it together, minus a small wrench and a Phillips head screwdriver. Those are the only two things that I needed to complete the bike setup. The bike also ships with a bell, the charger, the owner's manual, folding pedals, and a class two sticker. Next, let's talk about the suspension. The only place that we've got suspension on this bike is gonna be up here in the front forks. I'm not 100% sure exactly how much travel we get out of these front forks, but we do have quick adjustments here so we can adjust it for the different types of terrain we may be taking this on. The other aspect of suspension is gonna be this Celle Royale seat that we have here. Now this seat was a little bit thin for me, especially because of the pedal geometry. I was putting a lot of my weight on my sit bones and they just didn't match up too well. I felt like this was maybe a little bit too thin, a little bit too rounded in the middle. So it just kind of felt like I was sitting on a log. So it wasn't too comfortable for me, but with saddles, you know, it's really about matching your sit bones up to the saddle. So, you know, it might fit your butt well. I don't know your butt. I've never seen your butt. You know, I don't know your butt. But 
What I do know is we have these 20 by 4 inch fat tires. Now, we usually talk about how these nice fat tires, they add a lot of suspension to the ride. And that is true. Now with this one, because we have 20 inch tires, when we compare those to some of those 24 or 26 inch tires that we normally ride around on, it was a little bit more jarring. And that's just because we've got a steeper tack angle with these smaller tires. I took this bike on a run or two, probably terrain it wasn't necessarily designed for, but like I mentioned in the motor section, the motor held up well, the suspension held up well. I was able to get, you know, quite a bit of air actually in a couple different spots. So this bike is, you know, capable of doing that stuff. Definitely not designed for it, but, you know, it's capable of being smooth, riding around here in the woods, being a bike. Next, let's talk about the controls. So the controls on this bike are fairly simple. We've just got this three button setup over here on the left. We've got an up and a down arrow and a power button. The screen we have here, I haven't seen it yet, but I really like it. It's got sort of that old school odometer vibe to it. And it also shows us our miles per hour when we're not using the motor, which is a big plus. Now this screen is gonna tell us a couple different things. It's gonna tell us the time, it's gonna tell us the voltage that we're running, how much battery we have left. It's also gonna tell us how fast we're going in miles per hour. And it's gonna tell us our total range, time, and a couple of other cool little features here. We've also got this USB port here in the bottom, which is nice if you need to charge up a phone or a GPS unit or something like that. So a super easy three button setup and a very nice display in my opinion. And that's going to cover it for the nuts and bolts of the bike. Let's go ahead and send it out to myself in the past for the ride test. All right, guys, we are out here for the ride test portion on the Ecotrick 20 inch fat tire folding e-bike. I think uh, maybe they should look at coming up with a name for it because it does have kind of a cool style to it. I'm sure there's lots of names they could come up with like the General or the Sergeant 20 inch. You know, it's very military inspired to me. You know, that's what I get out of it. Anywho, that's what we're on, and this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna test this out as if it were an acoustic bike. Let's go ahead and shift down here. Turn off that pedal assist. So now we're just pedaling here in first gear. Pop it up into second. Nice shift in second. Excellent shift into third. Now, one of the things you will note is we can see the miles per hour that we're going on here, which is nice, even though we're not actually using the pedal assist. So some displays don't do that. They're not set up that way. Go ahead and hit fifth, then into sixth, and then into seventh. Going from sixth to seventh seemed like a little bit of a jump there. Kind of fell in there a little bit hard, but the rest of them, the shifting was fairly easy. Let's go ahead and come to a stop here. Now, the brakes are a little loose, and I haven't gotten down there and messed around with them or anything, so that's something we could probably fix and tighten them up a little bit, but dry out of the box, uh, they were a little bit loose. It takes a little bit longer to stop than maybe some of the other e-bikes we've tested. So let's go ahead and put in pulse test level one, and we'll start pedaling. So it's right at about half a rotation before we start getting some pedal assistance here. So not too bad, fairly responsive. And pedal assist level two. Gets us up to about that nine, 10 mile an hour mark if I was putting in any effort. Pedal assist level three. And take it off road. About that 10, pedal assist level four. Right, shift up a little bit here. And when the pedal assist is on and you're switching gears, it's a lot less noticeable that six to seven gap there. And we're going about 15 or so. And then pedal assist level five should take us up to that top speed of 20 miles per hour. And there we go. So you can hit that 20 miles per hour fairly easily here. Now, one thing to note is when you are in pedal assist, you know, that will decide how fast you can go. You know, pedal assist level one is slower than pedal assist level five. And with some bikes, 
go ahead and stop here real quick. With some bikes on the throttle, as long as the bike is on, or at least in Pelsis level one, then the throttle will just go, you know, up to that 20 miles per hour. But with this one, as we will find out, uh, it doesn't do that. So we've got pedal assist level zero. The throttle over here doesn't work. So you could kind of utilize that as a safety measure. And then we'll do it pedal assist level one and hit that throttle. That takes us to about five miles per hour. Pedal assist level two. Gonna take us up to seven or eight. Pedal assist level three. Gonna take us around to that 10. And then four should take us up to around that 14, 15. And pedal assist level five. Now, where I'm at right now, I'm actually going into the wind. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn around and we'll see how fast we can go from zero to top speed with our throttle here. And we're gonna count that after the bump. That wouldn't be fair, guys. That wouldn't be fair. Go ahead and pop up over here. All right, so we actually got a little timer down here. So as soon as it hits 30, I'm gonna go ahead and go. We'll see what how long it takes us to hit top speed from a dead stop. All right, we're at 22.30. All right, 15. 17, 18, you can do a 20 inch fat tire folding bike. So pretty much just seeing that 19.5 there. So it took about 20 seconds or so it looked like to get to that 19 miles an hour. Yeah, it looks like it wants to just stop right at that 19. Oh, there's a 19.9. Oh, I saw the 20. You guys saw it. You saw it. So it takes about 20 seconds or so to hit that 19-ish, and then, you know, a little bit longer to kind of hit that 20 plus there. Now, as far as the ride goes, it's actually fairly smooth. So we've got these big, fat, four-inch tires. You know, they're a little bit smaller than some of the other bikes that we've tested. Uh, however, we do have this front fork suspension down here, which is doing quite a good job. Nothing in the back. And the seat that they have on here, it's not my favorite seat as far as seats that I've tested out. It's a little bit thin, a little bit long. Doesn't really fit my sit bones exactly right, but it could fit somebody's sit bones out there. So I don't knock too hard on seats in general, just because, you know, you got to match the seat up to your sit bones. So, hey, you know what? It's not a good match for you know, my butt, but there's other, you know, fish in the sea. If I was to use a dating analogy, which sort of makes sense, I guess, with the seat. It's like a long-term relationship. You know, you got to make sure it's a good fit. You're going to be hanging out a lot. You're going to take it to the movies, you know. So this is a bike, bike review and also life advice, you know, I guess. Now, uh, if you get all of your dating advice from some guy who rides around electric bikes on the internet, that's up to you, okay? Just offering up some advice for you guys. So handling this, you know, fairly bumpy, somewhat packed down terrain really well. Uh, no real complaints as far as its, you know, moderate off-road capabilities. Now, I did, when I was filming the slow-mo all the sexy shots earlier i did take this out and take it on some backyard sort of bike trails and was able to get into some pretty interesting situations um, and actually handled itself a lot better than i had anticipated now if i was going to go back out there i would take the gopro with me you know show you what i'm talking about but you just have to take my word it's coming from the the e-bike reviewer slash dating slash life advice guy you know you got to trust that so go ahead and do a brake test real quick. Let's see how far we're going at that top speed right now. So probably closer to that 15, 16 foot as far as stopping. Like I mentioned, I hadn't really adjusted this or anything. So definitely something we could go down and fix if we wanted to. All right, guys, that is going to do it for our review of the 20 inch fat tire folding e-bike from Ecotrick. 
If you want to know more, I'll have a link down to their website below. If you guys got any questions, please let me know down in the comments. Love talking to you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.